Come inside, come inside. There behind the glass lies a real blade of grass. Be careful as you pass. Move along, move along. Come inside, the show's about to start. Guaranteed to blow your head apart. Um, my dad and I used to go camping in Norfolk because we liked to go fishing. And my mum would go with my sister and things down to Cornwall because she liked sitting in the sun and stuff like that. And I was sitting in uh, up near Great Yarmouth in Norfolk on the, on the River Thurn fishing. I was about 10. Dad was in the pub and uh, he'd bring me out little glasses of cider, funny enough. And uh, he'd met some chaps that had a, a boat and they were got talking to Dad. He was quite a friendly old Scots when he was drunk. And they invited him back to the boat for a drink. And of course, I came along and I started showing off. And, doing stuff and they said, well, we're part of the game show, Ralph Reed's game show. Are you in the Boy Scouts? I said, yeah. And they said, oh, you, let's take your telephone number and all your address. And so they did, thought I'd heard nothing. I've got a letter from the game show saying, can I go and do an audition at the London Palladium? And then passed the audition and I got a, the Ralph Reed game show, which was on for two weeks at Golders Green Hippodrome. Uh, uh, and then I did the Billy Cotton Band show and the game show on the television. But I had a solo spot, six minute solo spot. I was 11 years of age. I, when I was window cleaning, I went and got myself. Uh, we were doing, me and my friend Larry were doing a pub in Lewisham and they were looking for a stand up comic over at lunchtime. So I said, oh, they said, you do it. So I didn't know how to do it. So I just took a load of drugs and went on and got through it. And that was it. I got six pounds for doing that. And then I did the Saturday and Sunday. And then I did the Montague Arms following Jimmy Jones. And then tons and tons of stag shows, uh, which was uh, a couple of comedians and strippers in a, they would be in a, I know, a town hall type thing, small community centre or rugby clubs. And, and that was a good learning ground. That was working with a lot of other comics as well. Well, the stage belongs to the winner tonight. The young fellow you'll see again at the end of this series, the very funny guy from London, Mr. Jim Davis. That was it, March the 9th, 1976. I went on and did New Faces. And then I won the All Winners Show. I won that, and then I won the All Winners Show. And then I came second in the final that year to Roger de Corsi, who's still a mate with a looky bear, I think. <clears throat> by the time I'd got to the final, I'd been spotted by Barry Cryer. And funny enough, Benny Hill had found a producer who was looking for a young comedian to join a Thames television programme called What's On Next. So I joined that with Injun Brackett, the great Bob Todd, and William Franklin, et cetera, et cetera. And, and Barry Cryer. And I got on really well with him. And still do. He called me the other day. He must be 140 now. It's only a game, so put up a real good fight. I'm gonna be. Frank came about after I got the elbow from uh, Thames Television. And I said, well, I'll give it a go. I said, Well, I don't want to work with, you know, sportsmen and things. You know, like Len Gandalf, basically. Sorry, Len's family. But um, I said, There's a guy called John Virgo who's very good. He's a snooker player, and they, they didn't know him. But they went and had a look at him, and of course, that was it. And then it moved on to the generation game. While I was doing a big break in the studio, a man came in and said, Bruce Forsyth's gone sick, and we're filming a big uh, generation game tomorrow. It's all been rehearsed, it's all done. Can you step in and do it? And I did. I, I didn't have a rehearsal, I just walked in and done it. And I wasn't particularly brilliant, but uh, it made Bruce get better really quick. Uh, and then later, I suppose, when he was talking about his contract, they thought, hang on a minute, we've got this other lad who can do this, Jim Davidson. So I, they offered me, that I was in the Falklands actually, negotiating on a satellite phone, talking to them about it. And I got that job, lasted for seven years. And I think a new controller turned up and realized the BBC were all lefties. And what was this neo-Nazi doing working for us? So I got the sack. In fact, 
BBC gave me, they paid me for a whole series of the Generation game and big break to go away. So, thanks. What's he saying, Kev? He's saying, how are you, Jim? Oh, I'm okay. How are you? Have you met Kev? Sooty, shut up. The worst thing happened to me is Bernard Manning died, so everyone's got to hate somebody else. So the perception of what I do on stage is slightly uh, different to real life. The sort of sexist, racist, homophobic stuff is not really racist, sexist and, homophobic, uh, sexist and homophobic. Although I do talk about sexism and homophobia and I talk about gay people and I talk about black people and people from overseas because that's the society we live in. I don't believe that um, if you want, if you, if political correctness wants to bring people together, it, it's really fucked up. What, what it needs to do is it, bringing us all together means we're all the same. We can all do the same thing. And it's now dodgy. Everyone, oh, you can't do this. You can't do that. And what I talk about now, I, I talk about that. And, um, and I ask the audience, what card can I play? Who protects me? What card in my pack says, you cannot have a go at me because I am. You must like me because I am. You can't sack me because I am. You can't talk to me because I am. You can't chat me out. You can't look at me. You can't say I look nice. It's not a very nice world to live in, is it? I, I think there's always going to be a victim in comedy. If someone, some smart ass said there's only two type of jokes taking the piss out of yourself, taking the piss out of someone else. I particularly like both. I like people that are funny. Add into that what the comedian adds to his material is, is either wants shock and horror. He wants people to agree with him. And the leftists tend to want to do that. Attacking jealous comedy or there's bullying nasty comedy. Either way, it's comedy. You know, my, I just like to make people laugh. I look at the audience, my target audience, what's going to make them rock with laughter and then make them laugh more. Give them a, a great night of comedy and then a bit more than what they expected to get. I don't want to be a smart ass. I just want to make them laugh their heads off and laugh at other people and laugh at political correctness driving us apart. It is, it's driving us apart. Just a classic English comedian. I saw a YouTube clip and thought, it's a good laugh, it'll be good fun, so I was like, bring the kids along. Yeah, he doesn't sugarcoat stuff by the sounds of it, so it's going to be a laugh. Why not? He was a very funny man. Old fashioned comedy. I like him. We just like Jim because he's old school, says it how it is. 